Better Call Saul Season 3. Episode number five, ladies and gentlemen, we're here to next week's episode of season three, and gosh dang, does it feel like we are blazing through this season and through this show. Like, we're, we gotta be close to the halfway point at this uh, at this point, man, and it's it's sad to think and sad to say, because I feel like I started Better Call Saul just yesterday, but last week, another fantastic episode, man. We got some more kind of backstory on the Gus and Hector situation. We got a lot in Breaking Bad, but we got to see even more last week, man, and again, I wonder what the falling out is going to be of Hector coming to fuck with Gus. You know what I mean? Pulling what he pulled last week in his restaurant. Obviously, Gus, you know, kind of that's exactly what Gus wanted, right? Maybe not to that degree, but something along those lines for Hector to do something irrational like that. That's I think that was kind of what the representation was of him, you know, shooting the little paper into the trash can and sinking it. You know, it's like he shot a shot and he made it. That was fucking dope to see all the stuff going on with Jimmy and chuck it's developing more and more and it's it, you know it's kind of crazy for me to say because of how much i love gus's character but i think right now i'm into the jimmy and chuck stuff more than the gus stuff even which is kind of kind of insane to think about because gus is one of my favorite characters in this breaking bad universe but either way i'm loving everything we're doing in the show guys so i'm gonna stop wasting time we're gonna go ahead we're gonna hop into this episode before we do i do ask what you guys are new channel you do hit that subscribe button comment down below what you guys want to see next man drop a like on the video for your boy for reaction it'll be up on patreon as well as early access to the next two episodes you guys want to check that out link in the description down below but we're gonna go ahead we're gonna hop into this episode so you got a phone the yards half mode uh the sockets and stuff are looking a-okay i'm gonna check again just to make sure we're almost there good maybe this is back when his condition was starting on off oh well, i think or not off yeah right yeah off it is maybe this is back when he was still with his girl was it was her name rebecca rebecca yep chuck you look lovely oh it's so good to see you <laughs> You. Oh. Hey, what's with the candles? To make a long story short, those bozos at PNM mixed up my payment. The deadbeat at 512 San Cristobal hasn't been paying his bills. And of course, I'm 215. Two exactly. Mm -hmm. so he took his ring off, so I'm assuming this is after they split. I I'm so sorry about the lights. Oh, it's nice. Atmospheric. <laughs> I mean, I still can't get over Jimmy being a lawyer. Neither can I. He's got his own shingle out and everything. I mean, a real responsible citizen. I mean, who would have thought? Yeah, that's why he has all the power out and stuff, huh? This is back early on when it was start starting. How's the tour going? It's good, good. Um, the Far East this fall, uh, China, South Korea, and Vietnam. That's going to be exciting. Do you remember when we tried to go to Salzburg? And that crazy old lady on the scooter oh, yeah. chased us out of the yeah. train station. <laughs> yeah, and then... um. And then we went and got, uh, it was a, a, a raspberry Linzer tort. Connecting a bit again. Oh, God. I'm sorry. I, I, I hate that thing. I feel like I'm on a leash. Oh. Mm. It's the electricity. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he was trying to cover oh it's my up. conductor. Um, I have to take this. I'm sorry. Yeah, Jimmy was trying to help him cover this time, too. Jimmy, ugh, he's done so much for him, man. Do you want me to rehearse the cello separately? Oh, shit. Rebecca. 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 Well, no, it's not just him. It's the whole section. Rebecca. Yeah. Uh, no. That's, that's fine. Yeah. yeah. What the hell? It is incredibly bad manners to answer a cell phone in company. Uh -huh. It's very rude. Just give me a minute and we can... No. Uh, um, I'll just get a cab. I don't want to put you out anymore. Please let me. No, really. A cab is the easiest. Chuck couldn't just be honest. No. He doesn't look, want to look weak. Tell her, then I will. No, no, no. You will not tell her. You will not tell her. Dude, Jimmy's right, man. Like, especially because of their history, right? They loved each other at one point. Probably still do. You know, they were married. Uh, things just didn't work out maybe because her touring and whatnot but she would understand dude chuck coming up with this lie is just terrible he probably doesn't doesn't want to look weak you know what i mean <laughs> why does he have the goldfish oh he's coming to see mike's guy i'm guessing our friend didn't refer you to me to get ichthyological advice i'm looking for someone with a light touch I'm not talking some teenager taking a five finger discount of string cheese at the stop and shop. I need highly skilled, high end, 
discreet, a real pro. Mm. Steal the tape, maybe? Great job, Miss Wexler. Very refreshing. Believe me, uh, we're happy to get this one off the docket. Not as happy as we are. Again, they got it all complete. Job. Thank you. Thank you, sir. It went smooth this time. There is something you need to hear before we get any deeper in. It's about your former attorney, Charles McGill. Ooh. What about him? Charles has been making some very ugly allegations about his brother, Jimmy, with whom I happen to share an office space. Allegations of what? Ugh. She's going to tell him. Charles thinks that Jimmy somehow took control of your documents while he was working on them at his home. He believes Jimmy transposed the address numbers. If there's one thing I cannot abide, it's a man who won't own up to his mistakes. Ugh. Now, whatever mud McGill is slinging is not going to screw me out of the best outside counsel I've ever had. Mm. That's, that's great. I'm so glad to hear that. She brought it up to them. That's good, man. No awkwardness later on if they see it. You're sure it's not going to be a problem? Mesa Verde isn't involved in any way, shape, or form. Fuck, man. Something makes me feel like it is going to involve them in some way, shape, or form. Maybe Chuck gets them involved directly. I don't know, dude. At least she told them straight up, right? You know, so it's not going to be a surprise later on since she is helping Jimmy with the case, too. She didn't tell them she was helping Jimmy with the case, but... Nonetheless, she did say she was kind of involved in one way or another. Maybe you don't need to testify at all. No, I do. I'm the only person who can adequately explain the context of that tape. Otherwise, the defense will tear it to shreds. Hmm. It's already a solid case. We have Jimmy's statement from the pre-prosecution diversion. There's my testimony and the private eyes. Maybe there's no need to put you through the ringer like this. This isn't about me or my health. This is about PR. Hmm. We lost a client. What Jimmy did is unconscionable, yes. But one of my jobs is to safeguard the firm's reputation. This True. is not the time to worry about how we look. This is about what's right and what's wrong. I don't think they're ready. They're expecting this to be cut clean and easy. But Chuck, he's like, damn, this is going to make us look a little crazy. Because he knows this is going to get some attention in the public, I'm sure. Mr. McGill broke into his brother's home and destroyed an audio cassette which contained a recording of a conversation between himself and his brother, Charles McGill. The State Bar believes that once we have presented the facts, Some the committee nice will cuts. agree that disbarment is warranted for James McGill. Come on, Kim, kill this shit. There is another side to this story. One not about calculation or ill intent, but about two brothers whose relationship after years of strain finally broke. You'll understand James McGill is an asset to our legal community, and he should remain a full member of it in good standing. Maybe push that he's doing elder law and stuff, and there's not enough people doing that. He and I were concerned that Jimmy might strike his brother. So that's when we stepped in. Thank you, Mr. Hamlin. Certainly. Nothing further at this time. Ms. Wexler. Mm, Cross-examine. This is interesting. Kim going up against Howard a bit. His brother asked to hire him in the mailroom at our firm. And you did? Yes. What was your opinion of him then? He had a lot of get up and go. He was a hard worker. You had a nickname for him, didn't you? Yeah. Charlie Hustle. He'd put himself through law school and taken the bar exam without telling any of the partners. Even Charles. Sounds like you didn't hire him. Why not? With that kind of grit? The partners decided it would be best to avoid the appearance of nepotism. We felt hiring Jimmy might damage morale. Your firm is Hamlin, Hamlin, and McGill, right? Who's the other Hamlin? Mm-hmm. That's right. My father. So it's okay on that front, but what about Jimmy? Which partner was the most concerned with nepotism? Charles McGill. Did Jimmy know his brother was the one that prevented you from hiring him? No, he did not. He brought his brother food, supplies, even his favorite newspapers. Isn't that right? He did. Could you speak to the terms of Charles's leave of absence? You know I can't. It was an FMLA leave. Anything more is confidential. But you can confirm it was due to mental illness, correct? Objection. Charles McGill's mental health isn't at issue. This is a smear job on the state board's upcoming witness. Nothing more. This is not a competency hearing, Ms. Wexler. Mr. Hamlin is not a psychiatric professional. Do you have any questions that would be more germane to his experience? No. You're trying to cover it up. Don't want to let that stuff come out, which is smart on their part, but it's good on Kim's part, too. What are you still doing here? Okay, keep me posted. 
Flights delayed for what? The guy he hired? But Ted Kaczynski's brother loved him too. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to help. That's sanctimonious. I love my brother. He's a good person. He has good in him. But the law is too important. Like, that's the one. Jimmy, you do realize you just confessed to a felony? This is the bad part. Yes. But you feel better, right? Besides, it's your word against mine. He shouldn't have added that part in. For those who don't know, we need to prepare the room. Uh, the clerk is going to collect your uh, cell phones, watches, key fobs, anything electrical. If you prefer not to, please secure your items Thank outside you. this room. Thank you for understanding. Your phone, sir? I left it in the car. He still has it on him. He's going to try and make Chuck look crazy, probably, huh? This is so good, dude. Like, oh my god, I love it. You know what I mean? Like, this is literally just a court case of everything we've already kind of seen. We're just getting to see what happens here, ultimately. And it's... They do, they're doing a fantastic job with it, dude. I love it. I love it. I love it. Excuse me. Sorry. Oh! That's big boy! Oh, shit! That's the... Yeah, that's who Jimmy hired, huh? He got them quick hands. Slide of hand pro, baby. Yeah! That's all boys. That was tag team with Bill Burr. Damn, it's crazy seeing how all these characters have their connections. I had a suspicion my brother had tampered with documents in a case I was working on. Now, why would he do that? Doesn't sound particularly brotherly. I believe it was his hope that the tainted documents would cause the client to become disillusioned with my representation. Did you have any evidence to support your suspicions about James? No. My brother, whatever else can be said of him, can be quite clever. Without physical evidence, I felt that a recorded confession, if I could get one, was my best bet. On its own, I knew the tape would be somewhat flimsy, but it was a start. I suppose that Jimmy must have felt the tape was decisive evidence on its own. Otherwise, he wouldn't have broken in to destroy it. What you heard was theater, a performance, play acting. I exaggerated the symptoms of my disease to nope. extract the truth. Can we talk about your disease for a moment? It is sometimes referred to as EHS, electromagnetic hypersensitivity. I describe it as an acute allergy to electromagnetism. These things take time to unravel, even for doctors. Would you say that your illness affects your ability to think clearly? Yeah. No, it affects me physically. It causes me great pain. However, I'm perfectly lucid. Do you hate your brother? Here comes what he practiced. Absolutely not. I love my brother. Theater. There's nothing malicious in Jimmy. He has a way of doing the worst things for reasons that sound almost noble. But what I know for sure is that the law is too important to be toyed with. That's what he practiced. More theater. Please be brief, counselor. Yes, of course. Buy as much time as they can. Should be. Do you have Oh, shit. Damn, that's who he called in. Wow, Rebecca. Ooh. Might I have a moment I, to get a breath? Oh, of course, Mr. McGill. Uh, folks, let's call this 15. He in his head. Rent free. Did Jimmy subpoena you? You're not on the witness list. You don't have to testify. No, 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 no. I'm not here for that. Well, what then? Chuck, I wish you told me. Mm. I, I can't believe what you've been going through. How long has it been? Well, you're here to help. He told her. Because all this is so stressful for me. Is that what Jimmy told you? Well, that you had been sick, allergic to electricity. He sent me pictures of the house. Chuck, yep. my God. That's what Mike got. Why didn't you tell me? I didn't want to upset you. But now you're here. And now you know. Sounds so evil when he says it. You've been sold a bill of goods, Rebecca. I want you to see what's what. Mm. This is what Jimmy wanted. He knew he would want her to stay, I bet. You know, she's going to hate you when this is over. Mm. Yep. You don't care. Oh, is this where you claim the tape is spurious? That it's not really your voice? No, that's me on the tape. Mm. He didn't expect but still, that. I have some questions. Like the recorder, it must have hurt like hell for you to touch that. There was a degree of discomfort, that's true. And where did you hide it? I mean, the sound's pretty clear, so it wasn't in the couch cushions, was it? Tucked under a space blanket, out of sight. 
I covered most of the walls with foil scrim craft insulation. I also hung a number of space blankets. How did you know it would work? What do you mean? How did you know your provocation would work? Why'd you think a bunch of shiny plastic would make me say anything? Because of how bad Isn't he was. Isn't it because you knew that it was precisely the thing that would worry me so much that I'd say anything to talk you down? Objection. Okay, withdrawn. Usually it's a perfectly normal house. You uh. think your house is normal? Can I call your attention to exhibit nine? This is your house, right? Yes. So exposed wires. Those are the pictures Mike took. There's a camp stove. There's a lantern on top of newspapers. You call this normal? I call them adaptations. Now, he claims that he lied to me to get me to tell the truth. And I'm telling you, I lied to my brother to make him feel better. Which of us you believe depends on how we all understand the mind of Charles McGill. He's trying to make him think that he was lying on the tape. Uh, talk about when these symptoms first started. It was shortly after you were divorced. Is that right? You think the stress of the divorce brought on the illness? I doubt it. I'll tell you why my brother brought my ex-wife to this hearing. 4,000 miles she came. What Jimmy's driving at is the last time I saw her, I covered up my illness. I've been suffering from it for some time, but I went to great lengths to conceal that fact from her. Talk about the phone and how you threw it. He's hoping this will break me down. Split me apart at the seams like a murderer confessing on an episode of Perry Mason. <laughs> Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, Jimmy. Earlier, you talked about other diseases, physical conditions, you said. Uh, so, okay, if you'd had, um, I don't know, lung cancer, would you have told Rebecca then? If that had been the case, maybe I might have. So how is this different? Mr. McGill, move it along. He's trying to say it's a mental thing. Right, so with the lights out, you don't feel them. If the current's not flowing, no. Oh, sorry about the exit signs. I guess they couldn't kill those for you. Well, they're not drawing much current, and they're far away. <sighs> Intensity drops off with distance per the inverse oh, square. Oh, this is oh, oh shit. Oh, inverse square. I'm not a. I don't know. Why I can't remember his name. Dumb that so down long. a shade for me. The farther away it is, the stronger the source Gil. needs to be to have an effect. Can you feel more current coming from any particular direction right now, from the back wall, or uh, from over there, or up through the floor? Can you tell us where the nearest source is right now? He has something on him, huh? Jimmy, do you have something in your pocket? Yes, I do. My cell phone. From this distance, you should feel it, and you don't, do you? Mr. McGill, you were warned to leave your electronics outside. He's trying to show it's mental. He took the battery out or something. Yeah. Just as I thought. There's no battery in here. You removed the battery. That's a sorry little trick, isn't it? Could you reach into your breast pocket and tell me what's there? Oh, that's he put something on Chuck, a battery. Oh, no. Healed it, huh? Damn. Can you tell the court what that was? It's mental. A battery. Mr. Chairman, you please. You recognize that man in back? His name is Huel Babineau. He's on our witness list. You bumped into him in the stairway. He'll testify he planted this fully charged battery on you over an hour and a half ago. Hour and 43 minutes. An hour and 43 minutes. Thank you, Mr. Babineau. And you felt nothing. No, 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 no. It's a trick. It has enough to be. is enough. I submit that Mr. McGill's mental illness is a non-issue. Mental. If he was schizophrenic, Schiz it wouldn't take away from the fact that the I defendant. I am not crazy. Mm, he's breaking him. I know he swapped those numbers. I knew it was 1216. One after Magna Carta, as if I could ever make such a mistake. Never. Never. I just, I just couldn't prove it. He, he covered his tracks. He got that idiot at the copy shop to lie for him. Mr. McGill, please, you don't have to go. You think this is something? You think this is bad? This, this chicanery? He's done worse. That's Billboard. Now he's trying to go off on shit. He defecated through a sunroof. <laughs> That I is saved true. him. Chicago I Sun shouldn't have. I took him into my own firm. And he gets to be a lawyer? What a sick joke. I should have stopped him when I had the chance. Damn. And you, you have to stop him. You... Yep. They're like, damn, he kind of going crazy. They, he got him to snap. Ooh, that silence. Ha ha ha.
please don't end here, man. This is so good. Do you have anything else? No. Nothing further. He got to show them he's he's not right right now, and that it is mental, man. He he, because it was on him that whole time. He didn't feel it until he saw it, and now he's focused on the signs way more. So it's fucking with him. Damn. Fantastic episode, man. Absolutely amazing. Season three, episode five of Better Call Saul is in the books, ladies and gentlemen. I told you, oh my God, I'm this this Jimmy Chuck storyline is so good. Like we didn't even jump to Gus or anything this episode, man, and I did not mind it at all. I fucking loved it. One of my favorite episodes of the show thus far, I think. You know, see like the full build up from season one. Kim working at HHM and stuff to this, her cross-examining them, or Howard rather, and then now Jimmy doing it to Chuck. I was wondering this whole time, you know, what, what was going on? And I should have known that's who uh that's who Jimmy who 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 the who Mike's guy had hired, right? And this is how Heel gets into the into the mix overall. So cool to see them bring in all these characters, but he planted the battery on him. We know Jimmy stole um from Jesse in Breaking Bad, so we know he got that side of hand pro but oh it's mental we all know it right because the even the doctor in the hospital the nurse uh she had turned on the bed or some some electricity when chuck was in there and she did it silently without saying anything and nothing changed he didn't notice it so it's 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 mental man like that thing was on him the entire time and he didn't react until he physically saw it you know what i mean it's all mental but we already established this you know a while ago back when the nurse did that thing but regardless now they're seeing it too not only are they seeing that it is a mental thing it's not necessarily physical it affects him physically yes but it's caused you know because of his mind it's caused mentally so they got to see him snap a little bit too and they were all looking at him like damn hold on now he a little bit he, he a little bit crazy you know so jimmy did what he wanted to do chuck thought he was one step a step ahead of him with the tape you know with the whole phone battery situation being like oh it's turned off or oh you got you got something on you don't you and he's like yeah he called him out but jimmy was one step ahead man i love seeing this stuff it's so good because at the end of the day this is the breaking bad universe but we didn't get stuff like this in breaking bad i think breaking bad was more of a intense show but this is a little bit different, right? There's still intense moments in it and things like that, but it's not like the Heisenberg, Tuco intense stuff, right? It's not the the like shootouts and things that we've had. And I'm sure we will have some of that in this show. And we've had some, you know, intense moments, but Breaking Bad has a different vibe to it in that sense. But I will say, I do think Better Call Saul right now, writing wise and story wise, is on the same level as Breaking Bad for me, man. I'm enjoying it so much. I love seeing all the characters come in. I love all the new characters we have. And literally, this entire episode was just a fucking court case. And we still have more to figure out. Excited to check out what we have in store for next week. But guys, let me know what you thought about it in the comment section down below. Like always, also, if you guys enjoyed this reaction video, make sure to leave a like if you guys are new channel. Hit that subscribe button for reaction to be up on Patreon as well as early access to the next two episodes. If you guys want to check that out, link in the description down below. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one. What is going on, guys? I hope you all did enjoy that video you just checked out. If you did, make sure to drop a like and comment down below. What is something you guys want to see me react to next on the channel? I want to give a couple quick shout outs to some of my highest tier supporters over on Patreon, man. Shout out to the homie That's So Gordo, the homie Alexander Collins, and the homie Christopher Larimer. Your guys' support is much appreciated. If you guys haven't already and you do want to join the Patreon family, the link is on screen right now, as well as in the description down below. You get early access to a bunch of videos up to two, sometimes even three weeks in advance, full length reactions, and you get to participate in polls to help decide what we do and what we react to on the channel. But I hope you guys all have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one.